Florence is definitely one of the most beautiful cities in Italy, one of those places to see at least once in a lifetime. Its streets are rich in history, and its museums are among the most beautiful in the world. Ancient palaces, sculptures, art everywhere, strolling through the streets of Florence is truly an extraordinary experience. And the historic center is perfect for exploring on foot, allowing you to enjoy the atmosphere even more. There are so many things to do and see, but if you are visiting the city for the first time or have limited time, here are the top 20 attractions and things to do in Florence. The Florence Cathedral, whose full name is the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, is the fourth largest church in Europe. It has three aisles, white and green marble exteriors, and its interiors are devoid of furnishings, but dominated by a cycle of monumental frescoes created by Giorgio Vasari and Federico Zuccari between 1572 and 1579. But have you noticed that the decoration of the upper part of the drum is still unfinished when entering the cathedral? This is because when the competition was announced to win the work, Michelangelo and Baccio Diagnolo were among the participants. Baccio Diagnolo won the competition, and when Michelangelo saw the work in progress, he called it a cricket cage. The poor public approval and Michelangelo's remarks led to the interruption of the work. The Florence Cathedral is divided into several parts, all worthy of a thorough visit, especially if you are staying in the city for a few days. One of its highlights is definitely Brunelleschi's Dome, an attraction within the attraction. With its masonry covering divided into eight segments, the golden ball supporting the cross at the top, and the lantern placed at the summit, completed posthumously after the death of the great artist. Separate tickets are required to access it. Brunelleschi's Dome is the vaulted roof of the cathedral, and at the time of its construction, it was the largest dome in the world. It still holds a record today, it is the largest masonry dome ever built, with a maximum internal diameter of 45.5 meters. It is a true masterpiece created by Filippo Brunelleschi. But the beauties of the cathedral do not end here. Another must-visit is the magnificent Giotto's Campanile, from which you can enjoy a wonderful view of Florence. With a height of almost 85 meters, it is the finest example of Florentine Gothic architecture from the 14th century. The exterior, like the cathedral, is covered in beautiful white, red, and green marbles, and it is considered one of the most beautiful bell towers in Italy. As the name suggests, the project was started in 1334 by Giotto, who unfortunately did not live to see its completion. He passed away in 1337, when only the first part of the project had been completed. The construction was then continued by Andrea Pisani, following Giotto's instructions. Climbing to the top is a must, after 400 steps, you reach a large terrace that offers a marvelous view of the city. The fourth and final beauty of the Florence Cathedral, but certainly not the least important, is the Baptistry of San Giovanni. Located in Piazza Duomo, in front of the entrance to the cathedral, it is one of the oldest churches in Florence. You will recognize it immediately, with its octagonal shape. It is covered with the same beautiful marble tiles as the cathedral and the campanile. In reality, the baptistry has earlier origins compared to the rest of the complex. What we see today is the result of expansion work on a pagan temple transformed into a church and later further restored. Piazza della Signoria is one of the most famous historical squares in Florence. Just a short walk from the cathedral, as soon as you set foot in the square, you will be overwhelmed by its beauty. Here you will find the Fountain of Neptune and the equestrian statue of Cosimo I de' Medici, not to mention the marvelous Loggia dei Lanzi, filled with wonderful statues. Among all the buildings, the Palazzo Vecchio stands out as a clear example of 14th-century civil architecture. Today, it houses some municipal offices and serves as the residence of the mayor of Florence. But there is also a museum inside that we absolutely recommend visiting, with rooms containing works by Michelangelo and Donatello, as well as the Arnolfo Tower, standing 94 meters tall, from which you can enjoy a marvelous view of the entire Tuscan capital. One of the symbols of Florence, the Ponte Vecchio, is considered one of the most beautiful bridges in the world. This picturesque bridge spans the Arno River and connects the historic center of Florence with the Adila d'Arno, the eastern part of the city, as the Florentines call it. 
In the past, the Ponte Vecchio was occupied by butchers and fruit and vegetable shops. But now you can find refined goldsmiths workshops selling exquisite jewelry. Furthermore, the central part of the bridge has been opened up to allow people to enjoy a marvelous view of the river and Florence. Easily accessible on foot from Piazza Duomo, 600 meters, 8 minutes, the Uffizi Gallery, 170 meters, 2 minutes, or Palazzo Pitti, 300 meters, 4 minutes. The Uffizi Gallery is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful museum complexes in Italy and the world. It attracts tens of thousands of tourists every year thanks to its prestigious art collections. The Uffizi is housed in a building designed by Giorgio Vasari, located near Piazza della Signoria. Inside, you will find works from the Middle Ages to the modern era, and you can see some of the most famous works in the world, such as Botticelli's Birth of Venus and Primavera, Titian's Venus of Urbino, Leonardo da Vinci's Annunciation, and other works by Giotto, Michelangelo, Caravaggio, and other renowned artists. Being one of the most visited museums in Italy, the entrance queues can be very long at certain times of the day. We recommend purchasing a priority admission ticket or a timed entry ticket. However, the complex of the Uffizi Gallery is not limited to just the Uffizi itself, but also includes Palazzo Pitti and the Baboli Gardens, located on the opposite bank of the Arno River. These two attractions are interconnected and lend themselves well to being visited together in a day. Palazzo Pitti has a complex structure, and visiting it will require some time, but the exhibited works are of immeasurable value. The palace's structure itself will leave you fascinated. You can visit the Palatine Gallery, the royal apartments where the Medici family lived, the Gallery of Modern Art, and several museums, the Silver Museum, the Fashion and Costume Museum, and the Porcelain Museum. Behind Palazzo Pitti, you will find a beautiful garden, the Baboli Gardens, the historic park of Florence, where you can enjoy a marvelous stroll after visiting the palace. It was created at the behest of Cosimo I de' Medici and covers an impressive 45,000 square meters. There are four different entrances, but if you have visited Palazzo Pitti before, you will enter through the main gate in Piazza de' Pitti. The garden is truly extensive and has so much to see, including plants, sculptures, grottos, fountains, and small lakes. You will be immersed in a green oasis and can enjoy beautiful views of Florence from above. In addition, there is a small amphitheater and a porcelain museum. The most famous statue in the Baboli Gardens is undoubtedly the Grotta del Buontalenti, a suggestive cave created in the late 16th century by Bernardo Buontalenti. Inside, you can admire numerous sculptures and a small lake. Finally, at the top of the gardens, behind the Neptune fountain, you can also visit the Porcelain Museum, a small museum with several rooms filled with porcelain of all kinds. Additionally, from here and from the Forte di Belvedere, you can enjoy a marvelous view of the surroundings. By royal decree, in 1865, the Bargello National Museum was recognized as the first Italian museum dedicated to medieval and Renaissance art, and its collection of Renaissance sculptures is considered one of the most important in the world. It is located inside the ancient Palazzo del Podesta in Florence, near Piazza della Signoria. The museum is spread over three different floors, accessed through the courtyard and then ascending to the first and second floors. Among the most beautiful rooms are the Michelangelo Room and the Donatello Room, with numerous works by the two artists. You can also visit the Ivory Room, the Chapel of Mary Magdalene, the Verrocchio Room, and many others. If you are a fan of sculpture and this branch of art, we recommend taking a guided tour to deepen your knowledge and learn all the curiosities about the exhibited works. Florence is a city full of wonderful churches. In addition to the cathedral, a visit to the Basilica of Santa Croce in the eponymous neighborhood, in the eastern part of the historic center, is also a must. It is one of the oldest and most imposing Franciscan basilicas ever built in Italy. As soon as you arrive in the square of Santa Croce, your gaze will be captivated by the beauty of the basilica's facade. Nearby, you can also see the monument to Dante Alighieri, Inside, you will find a vast collection of artworks and the tomb of Michelangelo, surrounded by three statues representing painting, sculpture, and architecture. You will also find the Cenotaph of Dante and the monument dedicated to Vittorio Alfieri. 
The Basilica is the final resting place of other illustrious figures of art and culture, such as Galileo Galilei. If you are in Florence, you cannot leave out Piazzale Michelangelo from your itinerary. Located on the same bank as Palazzo Pitti and the Baboli Gardens, this is the best panoramic viewpoint to admire the city. Most of the photos you see of Florence from above were probably taken here. The Piazzale houses copies of the most important works by the Renaissance sculptor Michelangelo, the David and the four allegories of the Medici chapels in San Lorenzo, made of bronze. The best time to visit is at sunset, but it is also one of the most crowded times. If you don't mind waking up early and are an early riser, we recommend visiting at dawn, in total silence, and admiring the sunrise over the city. Easily accessible by car through the tree-lined Viale Michelangelo, on foot by taking the steps of Piazza Poggi known as Ramp del Poggi. It can also be reached from the city center by bus line 12, Piazzale Michelangelo stop. Adjacent to Piazzale Michelangelo is the Rose Garden, a little-known garden that absolutely deserves a visit. Many tourists only reach the Piazzale and then descend back into the city. We recommend going down through this wonderful garden, where you will find 400 varieties of roses totaling 1,200 plants and enjoy beautiful views of Florence. It used to be open to the public only in spring, but now it is open year-round, although spring is still the best time to visit and admire the roses. San Miniato al Monte Abbey is a true masterpiece of Florentine Romanesque architecture, not far from Piazzale Michelangelo. Built between the 11th and 13th centuries, its exterior is adorned with beautiful white and green marble, similar to that of the cathedral, while the interior is in the Romanesque style and features three naves. At the end of the church, you can admire Michelazzo's Chapel of the Crucifix and the Crypt, decorated with frescoes by Taddeo Gudbi. Its position is quite enviable, it is located at the top of a hill, offering a splendid view of Florence. This hill, and consequently the birth of the church, is connected to a distant legend. San Miniato was beheaded on the banks of the Arno River and, holding his own head in his hands, managed to reach the top of the hill to die, where an oratory was erected in his honor. Another church that absolutely deserves a visit is the Basilica of Santa Maria Novella, in the western part of the historic center, near the Santa Maria Novella train station. It is one of the most beautiful and important churches in Florence. Located in a square of the same name, this Dominican church dates back to the 15th century, and its facade was designed by Leon Battista Alberti, using white and green marble. But the Basilica is especially worth a visit for its interiors and what it houses. Stretching 99 meters long, it is divided into three different aisles topped with decorated arches and vaults, and it houses priceless works of art. You can admire Giotto's Crucifix and Masaccio's Trinity. Furthermore, the admission ticket also includes a visit to the museum housed in the nearby convent, creating a unique monumental complex with the Basilica. San Lorenzo Square, named after the presence of the homonymous basilica, is one of the most appreciated squares in the city due to the presence of several buildings from the 15th and 16th centuries. Today, they are open to the public, and you can also admire Michelangelo's new sacristy, on which he worked starting in 1520. From the square, in addition to the main entrance to the basilica, you can see the famous Medici chapels, which house the tombs of members of the Medici family, hence the name Medici. In addition to the Medici chapels, another wonderful attraction not to be missed is the Brancacci Chapel. Located in the San Frediano neighborhood, it is inside the Church of Santa Maria del Carmine and represents one of the highest examples of Renaissance painting. Two of the greatest artists of the time, Masaccio and Massolino de Panigale, worked here. The Brancacci family was an ancient patrician family of Florence, who arrived in the city in the mid-13th century. It was Antonio di Piero di Pivacis Brancacci, a member of the family, who acquired the patronage of this chapel back in 1387, now known as the Brancacci Chapel. It is absolutely worth a visit for the beauty of its frescoes, which have recently been restored. The restoration work also brought to light new scenes, making the chapel's treasure even richer. Located in the square of the same name, behind Piazza della Repubblica, Palazzo Strozzi was the residence of the Strozzi family, one of the wealthiest families in Florence, from whom it also takes its name. 
This family was in constant conflict, both politically and financially, with the Medici family and played an important role in the city's history. Today, the palace is open to the public and is managed by the Palazzo Strazzi Foundation, with the mission of enhancing the artistic offer for tourism in Florence. It does not have a permanent exhibition, but hosts three temporary exhibitions every year, some of the most important being Peggy Guggenheim, Gustav Klimt, Botticelli and Filipino Lippi, and Cezanne in Florence. Florence is not just museums and religious buildings. The capital of Tuscany is a constantly bustling metropolis, thanks especially to its streets, its local establishments, and its squares. Another fundamental meeting point for tourists and locals are the markets, the most famous of which is the Mercato Central, dating back to the 19th century. The market is spread over two floors, to purchase high-quality food and wine products. You can explore the lower level of the market, on the upper floor, you can find places to sit and enjoy a low-cost breakfast or a aperitif. Returning to the historic center, we recommend a visit to the Galleria dell'Accademia, so named because it was originally built for the students of the nearby Galleria del Bel Arti, allowing them to appreciate the masterpieces of Florentine art. The gallery is also known as the Museum of Michelangelo since numerous works by him are exhibited there. But the main attraction is undoubtedly Michelangelo's David, which is why many people visit the entire museum. This statue, standing 502 centimeters tall including the base, is considered a masterpiece of world sculpture, as well as one of the emblems of the Renaissance and a symbol of Florence. The statue depicts David, the biblical hero who confronted the giant Goliath. The allegory signifies the victory of intelligence over brute force, but it is also a monument to courage. The impressive expressiveness of the face shows David resolute and unwavering just before he hurls the stone with his sling. Created between 1502 and 1504, Michelangelo used a single block of marble. The artist's extraordinary skill and genius were emphasized even more by the fact that the marble block had already been used by two other artists, Agostino Di Duccio and Antonio Rossellino. However, both of them discarded it, considering it too fragile to support such a weight. The perfection that Michelangelo achieved was impressive, a statue standing at 4 meters and 10 centimeters, with proportions and incomparable beauty. So, share your opinion, let us know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a like and don't forget to click the subscribe button.